the limit comparison test, which we're going to do now. You can do everything that we did already with the regular comparison test. You can do with the limit comparison test. So we'll go with the, there's three, uh, three cases. And the first one you're going to use almost always. So here we go with the limit comparison test. So we're going to be lazy and use LCT as our abbreviation. So in order to do this, we're going to need, so suppose AK greater than zero, BK greater than zero for all K values. So we don't want to have zero or negative values. And so our first version if lim k approaches infinity, ak over bk equals c, and c is greater than zero. So how would I know the limit would definitely never be negative of ak over bk, just from what I supposed? They're all greater than zero. So no chance of getting negative. There is a chance of getting zero if AK gets smaller than BK quickly. So if the numerator shrinks way faster than the denominator, for example, uh, 1 over K would be an easy. AK is always 1, BK is K. That would be an easy example where it goes to zero. So if it doesn't, the limit is not zero, what that means is they both, right here, change in a similar, in a similar speed, basically. So if the limit is a number greater than zero and of course not infinity, and C is not infinity, then summation AK and summation BK act the same. So I'm gonna write act the same, meaning they both converge or they both diverge. So act the same means they both converge or both diverge. So that's the most useful. The less useful ones, if lim ak over bk, k approaches infinity, if this is zero, so what does that mean if our limit is zero? They were both positive, but AK, uh, or BK, the ratio AK over BK gets very small, meaning AK is gonna be smaller than BK and keep getting more and more small. So it's not, if AK was just five times smaller, you would get a number out of here. But it's not just five times smaller, it's, it keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller in relation to BK. So what this tells you is basically AK is a lot smaller than BK. So if this is zero and, so BK is the bigger one, and summation BK converges, so AK is getting smaller than BK, and if I add up all the bigger ones, I get a finite number. What does that mean if I add up all the smaller ones? I'll get a number that's at possibly, it's most likely going to be smaller than this, whatever the original summation is. So if your limit is zero and BK converges, then AK converges. We could make the statement that uh, summation, well, you have to be a little careful because this limit behavior means when K is really big not when k is close to 5, 10, or even a million. So the first bunch of terms may add up to a huge value, but eventually they'll get small. So you don't really want to use this fact that ak eventually is smaller than bk to say that the sum has to be smaller. But this just says that eventually they get, ak's get way smaller than the bk's. All right, third option. So you 
do the same limit. So there's one other possibility. Could it be zero? Could be a number, positive number. What's the other option for a limit? Could be infinity. So it could be that the AKs keep getting bigger in relation to the BKs. So if this is happening, it means AK is bigger. So if you also know that some AK or BK diverges, so we know the AKs are bigger, basically bigger than the BKs when K is really big, and the ones that are smaller diverges, so then AK has to also diverge. Most of the time, if you pick a good BK, your limit is going to be a number. And if you know your limit is a number, they both act the same. So you don't have to worry so much about all these details. So first up, let's redo a problem we just did, except I'm going to go with a plus instead of a minus. So we'll go summation k equals 1 to infinity 5 over 5k plus 1. So I want to know, does this converge or diverge? First of all, is this inequality true that I just wrote down? It's a little tricky to see with fractions. Which fraction has the bigger denominator, 5k plus 1 or 5k? 5k plus 1, which makes the entire fraction a little bit smaller. All right, so this inequality would be true, as long as k is positive. Things get crazy if k is negative, but we're just going from 1 to infinity, so it would be positive. Negative numbers, everything kind of goes backwards. But k is positive, so we have negative numbers here. However, does this 5 over 5k converge or diverge? So we just looked at this yesterday, integral test. Diverges. It's a natural log, goes to infinity, it'll be infinity. So we know a whole lot. I know that this smaller series diverges, or sorry, the bigger series diverges, but that doesn't mean that the smaller one diverges. So if I use the regular comparison test, I can't make a conclusion right now. So the regular comparison test, I found a bigger one that diverged. It doesn't tell you that the smaller one converges. So I'm just showing you that this, the regular comparison test, doesn't, uh, does not give us any conclusion right here. So regular comparison test is inconclusive. So what we're going to do instead is use the limit comparison test. Oh, pop-ups. All right, let's use limit comparison test instead. So what would be a good, we're going to choose a BK. The BK I'm going to choose is the exact one that I chose up here, 5 over 5K. Because I know the plus 1 is not going to have a big effect. So I'm going to choose, 
Here's our original, 5 over 5k plus 1. I think that plus 1 won't make a big difference. So I'm going to go and choose uh, just 5 over 5k. Oh, that was the example problem. So I just, we did uh, 5 over 5k minus 1, which worked totally okay with the comparison test. So I'm changing it only to a plus 1. Uh, so we're going to choose bk to be 5 over 5k, which is, reduces to 1 over k. Now I need to find lim k approaches infinity. We're doing the right here, the limit k approaches infinity, ak over bk. So no matter what comparison test you use, you're going, or what of these three are happening, you always start by taking your limit of your original ak over whatever bk you chose. So original, I should write down ak, our original ak is 5 over 5k plus 1. And don't forget the limit. So what should you do with multi-story fractions? So they're dangerous, so we're going to multiply by their reciprocal. So always get out of multi-story fraction land as fast as you can. So I just realized I had multi-story fraction. So first things first. Lim k approaches infinity. We have 5 over 5k plus 1 multiplied by k over 5. So our 5s cancel. And we have lim maybe. 1 over, how about that? You could uh, go either way with this. Uh, just you have to either go with 1 over k or 5 over 5k. You can't do what I did. So I'm just making sure you're paying attention, which you are. So 5k over 5k plus 1. All right, super easy limit. I get infinity over infinity. L'Hopital's rule. So go ahead and write that out. So step one, you got five infinities over five infinities plus one. Infinity over infinity. So use L'Hopital's rule. You're going to have to use it for a lot of these problems. So go back and practice. Our limit's one. That plus one didn't really matter, certainly not in the limit. So our limit is one. The only important thing to remember out of there is it's a number, positive number, that's not zero. So we're in case one. You're almost always going to be in case one. And if you make a good choice for BK, you're generally going to get the number one out. So if you make a good BK choice, you're almost always going to get one out of there. So we have. Uh, one right here, so they both behave the same. So I know that the sum of both of these is either both going to converge or both diverge. So one is greater than zero, so I'm going to write by the limit comparison test. Summation ak to infinity and summation bk behave the same. Summation bk is 1 over k, k equals 1 to infinity. Converge or diverge? Diverge, why? So what are some of a 
vocabulary words I can use. What type of series is this? There's two names I gave it. P series. What is our p value? One. So I could say p series with a p of one. What is the other special name I gave for it? Harmonic series. So you can tell me either way. So it's a p series with p equals one. Because it is a, and I'm going to be lazy and write a p equals one series. So I'm going to say p series and then say the exact value of p right when I say it. So you could say p series comma with p equals one, but I'm just going to write it's a p equals one series. So it's a p series, our p is one, and on your paper, somewhere written down, you'll have p series diverges when p is one or more. No, one or less. One or less? I don't know, whatever it says on your paper, I think it's one or less. So you could also say it diverges because it is a harmonic series. It's less memorization if you just remember p-series, though, because p-series will cover harmonic series. So therefore, summation AK diverges. So how much of this do you actually need to write on your own answer to get full credit? Let's highlight all the important stuff. So I had to figure out this limit here, definitely. Uh, somewhere along the way to figure it out, I need a lopi tau's rule to make it work out. I definitely need a limit comparison test. You had to be very clear about what you're comparing to. So up here, I said this is what I'm comparing to. So somewhere you have to tell me what you're going to compare to. And then you have to tell me why the right here does this converge or diverge and why. So there's actually quite a few things you have to tell me. You have to compare it to something, and you have to tell me why that something converges or diverges. So all the next problems, you're going to use the limit comparison test. So we're just going to go LCT, LCT, LCT. So first one, 3 fourths plus 5 ninths plus 7 sixteenths plus, I'll write the next one, 9 twenty fifths. What type of pattern is this? 3, 5, 7, 9. That's easy. What's after nine? Oh, you're good. And then? 13. So these are all the odd numbers. Add two, add two, add two, add two. So how do we do the add two pattern? Two K. So when K is one, we'll get two. K is two, we'll get four. K is four, we'll get six. And then we go plus one. So I need the odd. This would be all the even numbers, two, like two through every th infinity. If I want odds, I just take the evens and I either add one or subtract one. So let's get the right numerator. K is one, we get three. K is two, we get five. K is three, we get seven, et cetera, et cetera. So here's our add two each time. So there's our arithmetic sequence. What about denominator? Looks like I add five, then I add seven, then I add something else, nine. That's not adding the same number. How about multiplying? I don't know, four times nine fourths gets you over there? That's not very helpful. What other pattern do we see? So squared, two squared, three squared, four squared, five squared. We just have to get 
k right. So the first one's two squared, not one squared. So I'm going to go k plus one squared right there. So there's a squared pattern downstairs and an arithmetic plus two pattern upstairs. So questions on that idea right there. So we'll just throw a summation in front. We already said many times k equals 1 to infinity for this particular sum. So first thing, we need to pick a good series to compare to. So what we have to do is use our skills and think about what is really important when k is very large. Or maybe what's not important when k is very large. So plus one is not very important. K is a million. We'd have two million plus one. I don't care about the plus one. What else is not important aside from the plus one in the numerator? The two, sort of important, not super important. The square is important. Is that plus one important? No. Nope. So both of the plus ones are going to be, we're going to get rid of those. So I'm going to choose bk equal 2k over k squared. So I get rid of the plus 1 in the numerator and the denominator. And of course you can reduce this to 2 over k. So this is a harmonic series, or p-series, divergent. And so as long as our limit comparison works out, they'll both diverge. So we still have to do a limit comparison. So do that right now. So we're going to find lim ak over bk. And I already tell we're going to have fractions. So let's go ahead and write it as ak times 1 over bk. I know there's going to be fractions. So we'll just go ahead and write it as a product with the reciprocal. So go ahead and compute this out right now. No reason. I can factor a k out pretty easily. So how do I find this limit? L'Hopital's rule. So do you have to use L'Hopital's rule? You found limits like this before you knew about L'Hopital's rule. So how do we do that? There's the physicist method, which is look at compare high powers of x, and then ignore the low powers. So we have a cube and a cube. Or if you factor a k out, you have a square and a squared. So I can look at, basically it comes down to how are those two terms doing. The other ones are not so important. The actual way that we did this really, really long time ago, way back in Calc 1, 
I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 1 over k cubed, 1 over k cubed, and then distribute that across. So you don't have to do it this way. I'm just refreshing your brain on how we did uh, limits, infinite limits, before we had L'Hopital's rule. This is the proper way to do it. So this may come in handy occasionally. So I'm just going to go over this method right now. So I'm going to distribute here and distribute here. This is a magic fraction. What number is this fraction equal to? One. So it's the only number I'm allowed to multiply by and not change things. So I'm multiplying by one. If I multiply by anything else that's not one, I cannot write equals down here. So we have two plus one over k divided by two plus four over k plus two over k squared. Lim k approaches infinity. So I'm going to shift to the blue marker here. What does one over k, just one over k, what does that approach when k approaches infinity? Zero. Zero. What does two over k squared approach when k approaches infinity? Zero. How about four over k? What does that approach when k approaches infinity? Zero. What about two? What does that approach? Two. two. That's sort of a trick question. What about two? What does that approach? Two. two. So everything I circled is going to be a zero. Everything I didn't circle, just two. Right there. So we get is 2 plus 0 over 2 plus 0, which is 1. All right, limit comparison test says they're both going to behave the exact same. Both converge, both diverge. So we're going to write that. Limit comparison test says they're both going to act the same. And did we actually write down? I know we said y. So we chose bk. So they're both going to act the same. So somewhere we need to say summation bk. 1 to infinity diverges. Because it is a p equals 1 series. So we have enough here to conclude summation ak, 2k plus 1 over k plus 1 squared. So thus this converge, uh, diverges. So your answers to these questions end up looking a lot more like an essay than math, because you're justifying convergence or divergence using a test, which a lot of times has multiple things to check. I've got to compare it to something, then I've got to find whether that something converges or diverges. So you have to connect a few things together. So these answers can seem a little bit complicated. So I mean, the actual answer is it diverges, but to answer it fully correctly, you have to tell me why it diverges. So just looking at the series without doing any work at first, 2k plus 1 over k plus 1 squared, the way you should read this, there's k to the first power on the top, k squared on the bottom. So right away I can see it's going to act sort of like 1 over k. Now I have to formalize all that. Uh, it turns out that 2k over k plus 1, so it acts a little more like 2k over k squared. But if I would have gone with a 1 over, I went with 2 over k. If I went with 1 over k, I would have gotten everything exactly the same, except this 2 would be a 1. So fi my final value would have been, I think, 2 total in my limit. Which is why I say you won't always get 1, but if you pick carefully, you'll generally get 1. So I could have gone with 1 over k, and my limit would have been 2 instead of 1, but they would still act the same. So next convergence-divergence question, 
we'll go with one plus one third plus one seventh plus one fifteenth. What type of pattern is happening here? I could write one as one over one. have help in my notes. It's tough. It's one over one plus two k. Is that right? One over remember it is two K plus one. Does that work? I think that would be yeah five that would be the odd the odd progression. Alright, definitely one on top. Halfway there. And it's a fraction. <clears throat> two cubed? I think you're on to something there. So we got plus two to the first. Plus two squared plus two cubed. All right, so that makes me think two to the k power. Right there. So two to the k power, what do we have to do with that? So does that work when k is zero? Or when k, so if we do k is zero, that would work for the first term. But two to the first is not three. So that's going to break on the second one. Maybe minus one and then start k at one. So we have, so this is the k equals one term, two, three, four. I believe that works right there. All right, good eyes, Nick. You saved us. Yes, you did. Shake your head the other way. All right, so we added two to the first power, like you said, two squared, two cubed. So we're adding another times two each time. So I just thought, ah, oh, if this is like two to the you know, first, two squared, two cubed, this is k is one, k is two, k is three. So it has something to do with two to the k, now I to exactly what, so I just wrote down two to the k. And all right, we'll figure the rest out. So I may have had to add one instead of subtract one and start k at a different value. Uh, if I had to start k at like 5, I could always go and compensate if I needed to by doing plus 5 right there. So there are some ways around uh, starting at 1. Okay, so here is our summation. What k value do we start at? So there are particular k's here. We're going to start at 1. Now, whether I start at 1 or I start at 10 or 100 doesn't affect convergence. Convergence is a property for the terms at the end. So the last infinitely many terms determine convergence or divergence, not the first hundred terms. So what test do we use? Comparison test. What do you think is a good limit comparison test? What is a good BK to compare to? So I like 1 over 2 to the K. Why is that good? The minus 1? doesn't matter much when k is big. So we're going to choose bk equals 1 over 2 to the k. This choice really involves deciding what's not important and getting rid of it. So you're not necessarily creating a bk. Think of it more like you're throwing away stuff that's not important. So it's almost like a pruning exercise. So you're throwing away that minus 1 doesn't matter when k is really big. So I'm going to get rid of it. So there's bk. Now we're going to find lim k approaches infinity. I already see it's going to be fraction of fractions, so we'll go.
go ahead and just start out with the reciprocal right away. So go ahead, find this limit now, and hopefully it'll be one. But be careful, don't just assume it's one because most of them will work out to be one. So you've got to actually do the limit. How many times do you have to apply the Lupital's rule? An infinite number of times. You'll keep getting another LN2 basically every time you apply L'Hopital's rule, right? So L'Hopital's rule technically would have to be applied an infinite number of times. So I think we all agree that minus one is insignificant. So there should just be two k over two, two to the k over two to the k. So how do we deal with something like this previously? I multiplied right here to get rid of whatever that variable was. So I'm going to multiply by something down here to get rid of. So I multiply by the fraction 1. I'm going to multiply by 1 over 2 to the k. That's, that will turn the 2 to the k into a 1. And do the same thing in the denominator, 1 over 2 to the k. Denominator, there is, we have to distribute in the denominator here. So we get 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2 to the k. So now, k appears in one place. So all I have to do is figure out what is happening with this little fraction, 1 over 2 to the k when k is really big. Should be going to zero. The denominator is getting really big. <coughs> so that's going to zero. So we're going to get one over one minus zero, which is one. So I'm trying to impress upon you L'Hopital's rule is awesome, but it will not get every single infinite limit for you. It's definitely a tool you need, but it's not the only tool that you need to think about. You can accomplish a lot with algebra. So there we go, one, and I can say they limit comparison tests, they behave the same. So limit comparison test, we just compared the limits, so uh, they behave the same. What can I say about summation BK? So it's 1 over 2 to the k. All right, is that a p-series? Nope. It looks like a p-series, but p-series, it does have the letter p, but p really just corresponds to the uh, exponent. So it looks sort of like a p-series. In a p-series, the exponent is constant, and the base changes. So here, we have an exponent changing with a constant base. So not a p-series, even though it sort of looks like it. So it's not a p-series. We have seen this series before. What is it? Geometric. Geometric. It's a little bit in disguise. We normally are used to looking at it a whole number or a single number to raised to a power. Now, if I wanted the actual sum, I'd have to start k back at 0. So it's not going to quite be 1 over 1 minus a half, but it's pretty close to that number. I don't actually care what number it converges to. I just care that it does converge. So it's a convergent geometric series.
If you want, you can write r equals 1 half. That's the base right here. The base is 1 half. Thus, I can conclude, I have the limit comparison test already written down, so I can conclude that our original uh, summation had to converge, which was 1 over 2k minus 1. So this has to converge. Do we have to change pk's form because k is equal to 1, not 0? Uh, because the limit comparison test tells you they both converge, but it doesn't tell you about the number they're converging to. So even if we carefully figured out, we could figure out exactly what this equals. In fact, I think right off the top of my head, if I start it at, let me go to the blue marker, there's a 1 missing. The 0 term is a 1. So I'll just go minus 1 plus 1 over 1 minus a half would be this summation right here. So I mean, I could get this really quickly, but the point is this is a number. Whatever number it is, it converges to that number. Uh, but even, even knowing that number, it still doesn't tell me the number of this one converges, the one that we just got. Knowing that number would not help me at all figuring the number this would converge to. Is that sort of what you were asking? Yeah, that's what I was asking. Yeah, so we just need, yes, it did converge to something. Uh, that's a number. doesn't even have to be a positive number. Um, I think this one, just looking, will be positive because it starts out positive. Uh, all the terms are positive, so I can't get negative. So if I was careful with this, I think it's negative 1 plus 2 is what I think it is. So positive 1. But the fact that it converged to positive 1 is not important. If you, not with the, so limit comparison test compares the two when k is really big. It doesn't, it's not the same. So we did not show that um, if I knew that, for example, a k was less than b k and greater than zero, then I could say the sum would have to be between the zero and the sum of all the b k's. So I could go back and show that. Uh, the problem is our, our actual series is a little bit bigger because we did the minus 1, the denominator. Okay. So our series is a little bit bigger than the geometric one. So it's going to converge to a number that is a little bit bigger than the geometric convergence number. You, you may be able to put an upper bound on it if you, if you carefully picked another series. Uh, for example, one right off the top of my head, you might be able to do something with like 2 over 2k minus 2 or something like that, and then factor out a 2 and figure out what this converges to. But um, there, there's not a direct nice way to figure out the value it converges to. So we're just going, does it converge? Does it diverge? When I ask you for a value, it is only going to be a geometric type series. So it's going to be geometric only. This is a good place to end. So this, basically we do one more example and we're out of com the comparison tests.